Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. As you can see by the title of today's video, we're here to showcase how Aerial Wizard is unreal in NBA 2K25. Now, this is on a slashing build. It's on a 93 driving dunk with Hall of Fame Aerial Wizard, all that stuff. And I gotta say, it really, this badge and the power of contact alley-oops itself have made inside big so much more valuable. And I'm talking true blue inside big, something that has driving dunk, standing dunk, all that stuff. I mean, as you can see, just putting people in the rim with it too, with the driving dunks. But yeah, everything combined in terms of like, lobs actually being useful in the half court offense. Like, look at this. There's nothing really here on offense. We got seven seconds left and boom, you just bang on the dude down low with the contact lob. On the break, guards who can't dunk. Oh well, here comes the rim runner down the lane to just bang on whoever's standing in the way. Obviously, Passing lanes can get in the way of this stuff. Uh, not necessarily though, it's more like when people block it off. But as you can see, like, uh, for instance, uh, and we also have like the double lob right here. But in today's video, we have a whole gameplay of showing just a crazy amount of alley-oops. So stay tuned for that. I hope you all enjoy the video. And if you do, feel free to drop a like, sub if you're new to on notice, all good stuff. Also, before we get fully into the video, I actually have one more clip to show you and it's a self-lob. So I know I posted about this at community day and I never explained how to do it specifically. So this right here, as you're going in, to the hoop, it's gonna be A and B button at the same time, AKA your bottom and your right button. I don't know what it is for PlayStation, but A and B together. And it's gonna give you this right here, self lob animation, boom. Then you just go ahead and hit X to time it. So I wanna clarify before we get into the video too, as far as how to time the lobs, you're clicking, uh, like you're not holding X button and then releasing it. You're gonna tap it, like right here, I tapped X button to time it right there. I know some people misinterpreted that. I've even heard YouTubers that I was playing with that didn't understand that's how this works. So anyway, yeah, to time the lobs, you're just tapping X in that white slit right there, exactly where I did. Now, it'll green sometimes, it won't sometimes, it doesn't really matter if it greens, I just wanted to explain that. So anyway, let's get into the video now. All right, so off rip, as you guys can see, we obviously have the finishing boosts and all that stuff. So obviously, you know, take it with a little bit of a grain of salt, but I don't think they make that big of a difference. And as you can see, Hall of Fame Area Wizard is popping up. I'll show you guys all the contact dunk packages and stuff like that and the requirements to get these lob contacts and all that as well after this. But I just want to show you the straight up full gameplay of this. And you can see any of the deficiencies as far as when they don't work and when they do work in these like full court settings and stuff like that. So like I said, I hope you all enjoy the video and let's try this one to like 2000 likes. So you can see Bonnie gets a steal. We're out on the break. He throws it, boom, another one kind of in contact, but not an actual contact alley-oop. But the point being is, and I just want to kind of uh, run this back just for you to understand, like Bonnie doesn't have any finishing on, on his build at all. And I, every single fast break, I'm gonna just come down the lane. You can see he gets this guy to jump because people are just in general, like aggressive in terms of trying to go for those blocks and stuff like that. So he already gets one guy out of the picture and then I just dunk on the other one. And that happens a lot in the fast breaks where people are just obviously gonna try to block the point guard in transition. And it just kind of happens that way. So again, we're gonna show the full gameplay, defense included, all that. I just want you guys to be able to see the legitimate, like, <laughs> you know, ways of us doing this. Now, as you can see, Bonnie, obviously, you're going to see a couple of those in this video. And same with like outer right here with low pass act tries to throw me one. And as you can see, it kind of just ends up in the defender's hands. It wasn't the best angle either where he's very close to the like inside the three point line. But look at this one right here. So again, Bonnie's going to go in. He gets two guys to jump. And then I'm dunking on the third one in the picture. I know in itself, this looks like I'm dunking on three people. But again, I want you to pay attention to this. We got one guy jumping there, another guy jumping there, the brown shirt. And then, or not the brown shirt, but the one with overalls. And then I dunk on the brown shirt right here with the contact lob. So I would like to think though, this stuff can still initiate the contact dunk part of it in traffic on just one person. And then the others just happen to be around it as well. But man, I mean, and I understand, I, I get that a video like this is probably gonna help get it patched as well as just in general, it probably should be patched. But now I wanna talk about the utility behind just in general open alley-oops. We don't even have to talk about contact dunks in general. I'm talking open lobs. So to have driving dunk on your build like this, I know this looks open fellas, but against let's say like really good defenders, right? This is gonna be a hard pass to make. Lanes are insane in this year's game and chase down blocks are also pretty good. So not only when you don't throw a lob right here, would you be risking the passing lane turnover between two guys right here who could click their X button. But on top of that, if I catch the ball, and honestly, the same, I, I know a lot of y'all maybe aren't like so intru uh, into the, the details and specifics of how the game works and stuff like that, but the pass animations kind of slow the catcher down a little bit in this year's game, I've noticed. And it's hard to really throw like proper uh, fast breaks on just A button passes. But anyway, besides the point here, again, two guys laning as an opportun opportunity at that and a chase down opportunity if I just catch it and have to go up with an X button dunk. Whereas this is getting the pass out of the way. It's the whole point of an alley-oop in the first place if you wanna talk about competitive settings of it. 
it gets the pass up and out of the way of the lanes and makes it so I don't have to spend extra time catching the ball, then rising up and dunking. I'm just up in the air and already dunking. And again, it, it, I'd like to think very, very good utility in terms of actually being used in game. So right there, again, it probably worked out, but Bonnie just doesn't click his Y buttons quick enough. So now we just like, this is scuffed. I mean, I can't really catch the standing lobs that great. I only have like 60 standing dunk. And then you can see Bonnie playing the lane. They get the open three. Don't get it to go. These guys aren't really the best players or anything like that either. So obviously keep that in mind. And then you can see he tries to force it down low, but outer is cutting through the lane. So once again, another clipped example. And you have to have good kind of team chemistry and continuity as far as like how to go about these things. Also, dude just hit a late right there. That's crazy. I'm guessing he's low risk or something like that. But anyway, Bonnie's going to drive in, bait some people in again. Once again, they're they're flying off the corner. They got like three dudes uh, like crashing the paint right there. So obviously there are limitations to this, you know. Also hit me with a crazy zigzag right there. Shout out to him. <laughs> that, that was tough for sure. But anyway, back into the half court offenses and stuff like that. We're going to start playing a little bit more normal, but there are still opportunities like this that are still very valuable. Um, let me let me use this one as an example too. So obviously Bonnie tried to throw me the lob right here. Once again, doesn't click his Y button quick enough. But point being, the slips and involvement of this, the lob still would have worked really good right here. Would have been up in the air. I would have been dunking on like a late defender. He's not going to block it or anything like that very likely. Um, the proper way to go about these alley-oops though is flip me and Bonnie's positions right here. The ideal way to set one of these up, and you're going to see me do it on purpose later in the video, would be for me to be attacking from the right and Bonnie to be attacking from the left so that I can angle that alley-oop away from outer and like make it where my uh, path to the hoop is opposite of where the corner spot up is on threes. And the same thing can apply to Pro-Am, you just have to put it into, into you know, use as far as that goes. Like for instance, you want to do it away from where their dropper might be as far as like the bigs or something like that, or away from their hash so I could do it from the middle of the court and to the open hash where my point guard is or something like that. And we'll have more explanations on that later in the video. Same with, like I said, the contact lob packages and stuff. I just wanted to, like I said, get you guys a nice little full gameplay of just showing you the full limitations of the alley-oops. So right there, you can see we hit him with the pogo stick. This one was in the clips as well. You can see Bonnie's like got three people trailing right there. And now this is the crazy one. This is the real crazy one right here. We're talking a, a block right there, Bonnie in transition, we get one, really nobody to jump for that matter, by the way. All three of them are involved in this. So Blue gets put in the contact dunk animation itself. I don't even know who got put in it. They might have been like two dudes in the contact dunk animation for all I know. So I'm telling y'all, as much as everybody hates inside bigs, right? I know y'all hate playing on that stuff, like a ton of you do. But this has always been the utility of insides, is when contact lobs are still decent in the game, and they have been in a lot of years, just not the most recent ones, it's a very good utility to be able to have, especially on fast breaks and stuff. Now this one right here, OD unhinged. We got outer once again cutting along with me, which isn't exactly the best uh, in the sense of trying to make this the most uh, visually, you know, good. But anyway, uh, back to the point. Inside bigs can be very good in terms of the pick and roll usage. Uh, obviously, a lot of y'all like putting standing dunk on the inside bigs and don't care about driving dunk because a lot of them like to just be those below basket kind of screen setters and stuff like that. No one likes doing the weird stuff I do with putting ball handle on this type of a build, but being able to actually just ISO slash. And here I am playing point, playing defense too. I got 92 prim and 85 steel on the build with 92 defensive rebound, 85 O board, enough strength for like silver brick wall, and I'm and I'm plus one in that to gold as well. I mean. There's more to this build than just being a slasher uh, in general. And as you can see, I throw the lane off his head right there, <laughs> unfortunate. But anyway, uh, we'll, we'll finish this game off. And there are still a lot more lobs to go in this one, by the way. But we'll finish the game off and then we'll end up getting you to the uh, the actual animations and stuff. But again, in transition, one guy in the way, boom, contact lob. I I'm telling y'all, it's not cap. It's not me just like trying to put on a facade for the video. This is what we've been doing in rec and threes and stuff like that consistently. And by the way, this is a game mode where ones, aka dunks, aren't really valuable in in the sense of things because three pointers are worth two points and then dunks and like you know anything inside the three-point line was worth one point so in the sense of how that works it pretty much means three pointers are worth double the value of dunks aka they're worth in a sense four where dunks are worth two like if you get what i'm saying it's like double value on three pointers compared to dunks but Anyway, again, crazy dunk right there. We get another lob. We're eight for eight <laughs> on pretty much just alley-oops. And we also have takeover active now. So this is slice for those who aren't aware. And what slice does is it boosts speed, driving dunk, and agility. So for me who likes to play defense like this, obviously agility buff is nice, as well as just the fact that speed on defense is good. And as a rim runner, lob catcher, and stuff like that, and a pick and roller, speed is also really convenient in that regard. So now you can see, I'm even telling Bonnie. I'm telling, <laughs> unfortunately, like I said, you gotta have a little bit of, uh, 
cohesion from your point guard right here but now he finally gets there but point of this being is I'm setting up same side wing as outer is corner and you can see it sets me up for the perfect angle for the lobs I'm trying to tell y'all if you know about this type of intel and you know this type of tech as an inside big it, it's so valuable you just roll away from where your corner spot up is this guy will not be able to impact the play hardly at all if the back end here steps and hedges at all you can just curl it and I'm telling you it's like a, it's like a route you pretty much just run like a like a corner route right here where you're gonna run it off to the wing and then curl it into this area right here you want your end path when the lobs being thrown to be like right here so as you can see boom like we're curling that off hitting the perfect area for it and I'm not I'm telling you you might think it's just because it's bad defenders but great defensive teams will still get hit with that because it's a great strategy just in general it's a really good pathing as far as the alley-oop uh, just like kind of trajectory you want to put it on but anyway 13 points you can see we're gonna finish this game up right here but man I mean another contact lob in transition bro <laughs> I'm telling you all it's not cap it's so serious this is what we've been doing and like I said I'm positive that this is gonna be putting it on a route to get patched I understand but it doesn't even need to be so serious it's just the contact lobs need to be nerfed a little bit obviously but being a good lob catcher is still valuable regardless of whether you know it's it's about getting contacts or not but anyway let's just fast forward the defense here you can see we get a steal boom we're out in transition right here bonnie hawks the lane from the on ball i'm out in transition boom it's just like good speed good driving dunk a good lob thrower with 85 pass sack as well and there you go 11 for 11 obviously we had some turnovers along the way there were some stupid throws in some regards too so if you want to be more selective with it it was obviously still plenty of room to not have to do any of those but besides that 11.7 rebounds two assists one steal two blocks <laughs> we did have two turnovers as well obviously but anyway let's go ahead and show you the lob packages now and all the other stuff that's included with this all right so before we get to the packages i want to show you the requirements for aerial wizard so let's go ahead and just like uh upgrade the vert all the way so we can just understand how that's going to work so as you can see we're already gonna have the bronze right here so pretty much you're gonna need a 59 driving down we don't even got to talk about the low requirements because honestly it's stupid to even have it like this low it's not gonna be super valuable um, I'd say probably the threshold of like gold area wizard aka 80 driving dunk is gonna be good because you can at least get some open alley-oop packages because that'll be good for sure but to start getting the contact lobs you're gonna have to go a little bit higher so as you can see the requirement for Hoff area wizard is 89 driving dunk and in which case you get the contact dunk packages just the regular contacts not the uh, alley-oop contact packages but it'll make you valuable as a slasher to at least have 89 or 87 driving dunk so again that's gonna be silver poster Hoff area wizard now to get gold poster it's 93 driving dunk and then along the way as well what i'm thinking i'm gonna do is cap break my build to 96 driving dunk for the hoff poster but also at that point i have a 93 rating so when i'm cap breaking it i think i'm gonna go to 97 for the legend aerial wizard so mind you on a 6a build like this and a lot of builds you're gonna find aerial aerial wizard as a tier 2 badge so if you want technically while i'm sitting here at 93 driving dunk I could literally have the build on Legend Aerial Wizard right now. I only have it on Hall of Fame in that video right there, but I could you could run like Hall of Fame Posterizer Legend Aerial Wizard with 93 driving dunk. But anyway, that's it for the requirements and stuff like that. Let's go to the actual animation requirements now. All right, so as you can see, the elite contacts, which are probably what's triggering for the most part on these crazy alley oops. I mean, look at those animations right there, bro. It's 80 vertical, 92 driving dunk, aka. I would recommend the same way I upgraded the build 93 driving dunk at least 80 vert because you're going to get like the gold poster along the way with that because those are the poster requirements is 93 and 80 and then you have with the pro contacts 84 driving dunk with a 70 vertical so ironically if you have an 84 driving dunk it's actually enough to get pro alley-oop contacts but not any actual driving contacts besides that though I'm running all the alley-oop packages so like 87 for Zion we also have like 85 for the elite and then 70 for the pro so again those are your thresholds that you kind of want to be in the in the area of again 87 is going to be that silver posterizer and then as well as silver poster you get the two foot contacts off you know the pro so it's definitely a decent threshold to be 87 is okay i don't really like these packages the most to be honest with you i would definitely prefer to be able to get into this threshold which i will do with the cap breakers eventually and then uh besides that obviously you know we have like the other contacts as well with the pro off one but Anyway, I know a lot of y'all been asking for my con for my dunk packages as well. I'm going to show most of them right here, but I'll probably do a separate video. So for those who made it this deep into the video, you're going to see that. But for those who had, who look things up like this and don't want to watch the whole video, uh, I'll probably do a specific animations like uh, kind of overview and explain to people why I like these dunk packages. So with the back scratchers off one, it's more like 
quick drops, you're getting very quick, efficient dunks when you're holding up on the stick. With the Tomahawks, we have the Uber Athletic, and then we have LeBron as well. So the reason I like only these dunks being equipped is the consistency of the timing with the dunk meter. It's something I really like, and then it meshes in really well with the contact dunk. It's all Tomahawk-esque, if you get what I'm saying. So anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, feel free to drop a like. So if you're new, turn on, turn on the notice, all that good stuff. And like always, try one to 2,000 likes. If it's the end of the video and you want to show your support that you did, put lob or put Ariel in the comments. Search for it through. If you know how to spell Ariel, I know some people might not. <laughs> but anyway, I actually might not for that matter. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the only badge I need to get on this build now is strong handles. So ironically, you know, I, I'm honestly surprised because <laughs> obviously I do a lot of slashing, but I guess I don't, I don't really do a whole lot of cramming it in the paint or anything like that. Uh, I like to think I dribble my way down there quite a bit. But anyway, yeah, that's all we need for the badges. It's literally just one more, and it's two more levels of it. <laughs> but we have a 99 overall in the build now. I mean, man, it's looking crazy, fellas. It's looking insane. <laughs> but anyway, that's all. I'll keep you guys posted with more videos. We obviously have a lot more to do on this build in terms of the gameplays and stuff. But this was one of them that I really wanted to get out because, man, the lobs, we've been utilizing them a lot in pick and roll offense and fives, threes, all that stuff. Even twos, it's like super valuable as well. So. Anyway, that's all for the video. Hope you all enjoyed. And that, Tibby's man. Peace.